In the news this week, radical cuts to civil servants as the government merges departments to save costs. Also, obesity remains a major health issue amongst Australians due to unhealthy habits. This is the Evening News with Ivan Leung and Elise Simic. Good evening. Premier Mark McGowan announced his solution to reduce government spending through a series of department amalgamations. The Labor government was forced to make radical decisions to fix the budget, but the opposition said it won't work. Andrew Fuster reports. The new government faces record levels of debt left behind from the Barnett government, leaving no choice but to cut spending radically. We have three or four times as many government departments as Victoria, a state with two and a half times our population. Clearly uh, this was unsustainable and clearly uh, it had to change. The changes will see the number of government departments reduced from 41 to 25 from July this year, with some Director Generals set to leave first. But the Premier has failed to say exactly how many jobs will be lost and how much money the plan can save. We're making those tough decisions because it has gone on for too long that we haven't had as efficient or effective government as we could have. Following the government's announcement, opposition leader Mike Nahan disagreed with the cuts, saying the policy will not save money and claiming that 3,000 public servants will lose their jobs. I pushed Treasury to do some, some amalgamations and they kept telling me, amalgamations, history shows, do not achieve the savings claimed. The unions were hopeful that the changes might help but concerned about what it might mean for civil servants. Look, certainly we are not welcoming cuts and certainly there will be a negative impact on services to the community. Andrew Fuster, WAMN News. Australia's obesity problem is highlighted once again due to the Heart Week health campaign. Although bad quality of life is a major reason behind the epidemic, many modern Australians are encouraged to prevent major diseases by living a healthy life and getting their hearts checked. Cassandra Elliott reports. Having a muffin top might seem common these days, but experts say it could be worse for your health than smoking. The Heart Foundation's CEO says two-thirds of Australian adults and a quarter of all teenagers are either overweight or obese. He also describes Australia's obesity levels as an epidemic. What we find is that there are increased risk of heart attacks, of strokes, of type 2 diabetes, of fatty liver disease and several types of cancer. Heart disease and stroke are still the largest cause of premature death in Australia. Statistics from the Department of Health show males are at a greater risk than their female counterparts and those over the age of 65 are four times more likely to suffer from heart disease. Some people are turning to surgeons like Dr Harsha Chandra Ratna from the St John of God Murdoch Medical Clinic for obesity surgery. Our job here is to try and get people to lose weight and the lovely thing about what we do is we see people get healthier. We see their diabetes get better, we see their cholesterol go down, we see their blood pressure go down and we know that's going to help them in the long term. Heart Week starts this week and their main goal is focusing on the importance of diagnosing and treating conditions that impede heart health. You're encouraged to know your numbers by visiting your GP and having a health check. Cassandra Elliott, WAMN News. Have you heard about the petroleum resource rent tax? Now it might sound boring, but it's important as the federal government has missed out tens of billions of dollars as it appears the tax was not set up properly. Green Senator Peter Wish Wilson speaks about the federal Senate inquiry after it was held in Perth this week. The oil companies amongst themselves have got $238 billion in tax deductions set aside our job is to make sure the Australian people get a fair return on the resources that they own. They own the petroleum, the, the, the oil and gas, and actually make sure we fix this structure. 23 new officers will join the Western Australian Police Force after graduating this week. The new officers are graduating from a transitional course with 20 men and 3 women who have all previously worked as police officers in the United Kingdom or elsewhere in Australia. The intensive course ran for three months at the WA Police Academy, which is designed to get the new officers familiar with the WA police systems, procedures, policies and equipment. It's the families who are letting the officers rejoin and you know, I was spent a bit of time thanking the families for that because they know what it's like in policing and they know how challenging it can be and yet they still allowed them to rejoin so I think that was a real positive. Labor MP Amber Jane Anderson revealed the challenges she is facing after successfully switching from upper house to lower house. During a feature interview on our website, Ms Anderson and her team revealed the steep learning curve they have to go through due to a dramatic increase of help requests from the community. 
It is a lot faster moving in the lower house and I'm ready for that. The upper house is great and you get to spend the time scrutinising issues, uh, but I'm also ready for a faster pace and to really take on the opposition. We have a lot more constituents definitely coming in the door now, um, so the area I suppose is more condensed what we're working with now, so there are the, the phone calls definitely have increased, we get a lot more work. North Korea has fired another test missile as a defiant act against the United States. However, the missile failed within seconds after it was launched at the north of Pyongyang. It's reported that China is running out of patience with Kim Jong-un as he has yet to visit Beijing after taking over from his father's leadership position. A major protest was held against Donald Trump's climate policy as he wants to scrap the Environmental Protection Authority. The demonstration coincided with his 100th day in office celebration. Despite this, he claims his administration has been the most successful. And finally this week, a documentary looking into the life of movie star Heath Ledger is hitting selected cinemas. Fans are excited to get a glimpse into an intimate part of the star's life. Tickets to Open Night sold out at Luna Cinema almost instantly. The casting director, who got Heath Ledger his first acting role at the age of 15, spoke with us exclusively. And uh, yeah, a really talented young guy. Um, had a great likeable quality on screen. He was very intelligent and very keen to become a committed actor. So it was lovely to uh, have that opportunity of casting him in his first role. And those are the top stories you need to know this week. We have the latest news on our website and Facebook. Until next week, good night. Good night.